The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells, and the host of Between Tomatoes on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. Got two guests for me today. We got the double O trophy here. Of course, that's the trophy between Lake Orion and Oxford. And also, we have the coach of Birmingham Sea Home, Coach Jim Dewald. Coach, welcome back to the podcast this week. Of course, um, of course, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks, Sammy. I appreciate you having me on. Um, obviously, of course, you know, I remember the conversation we had, um, you know, before we started the, the season started. Um, we talked about, um, I know you, I mean, you guys, um, you guys are right now in the in the um, district finals, getting ready to play Waterford Mott. But you guys had a had a very unique road. I mean, you had a week two game against UD Jesuit, and then um, then you went and won the blue. But then, of course, you took on your arch rivals Groves. And I know you you and I we talked in, in length a lot about the rivalry with Groves. Um, so talk about you know what I mean, playing them first. Let's talk the regular season matchup. Obviously, you won that one twenty one fourteen. Um, so talk about, you know, I mean, what was your emotions coming into that game? Um, seeing the kids going nuts, you know, the home crowd and the forest going nuts. What was that environment like? Oh, it was a great environment. I think our environment here at Sea Home is as, as good as you'll find. I mean, the stadium itself, there's no track around it. It's built in with the brick. Now we have the new facility. It looks like a small college. I think our, uh, Athletic director Aaron Frank does a great job of keeping the crowd entertained with music and all that good stuff and videos. And the environment here is awesome. It's uh, really, really cool. And obviously, if you add a rivalry to that, it just amps it up that much more. And uh, our kids were excited to play. I'm sure their kids were excited to play as well. And it was a hard fought game. And, uh, you know, obviously, we came out on top of that 21 14, which was uh, a well or a, a very needed win for us in the rivalry. rivalry. And when you look at, of course, that environment, you know, I mean, I noticed that, you know, I've seen a lot of these teams these days use the lighting system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, then you guys are playing Thunderstruck, seeing you guys really excited, jumping up and down. I mean, like, you know, talk about how that that environment, you know what I mean, gets everybody all riled up, especially at Seahome. Well, the, the big thing is it, it's, a, it's a game, right? It's it's a football game. And, and sometimes... Uh, we play football and, 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 and take it extremely serious and kids aren't having fun. So we want to make sure the kids are having fun playing a game. I mean, football is hard enough, right? The, the two-a-days, the summer workouts, uh, the, just football in general is, is tough, hard, you're hurt, and you got to figure out a way to play through some of that stuff. So you want to make it – when it's time to have a game, time to have fun, we need to have fun. We can't get uh, – a little too serious, uh, so we try to make it fun and, and let the kids enjoy the sideline. Like as long as we're not showing up the other opponent, we just want to have fun. Um, of course, you know, in the, in the in the regular season game with Groves, I mean, obviously the first touchdown he gave up, the Hardy connection. Um, was that like a breakdown in coverage that you gave up on that first play from scrimmage? Um, you know, I just go out describing that play a little bit. You know, that first touchdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think uh, you know it wasn't. We, we recovered, uh, covered it uh, fairly well. I think our corner, um, you know, he, he under undercut the route early on in the route, which made him put, got him be, so allowed Hardy to get behind him, um, which is pretty frustrating. We try to tell those guys, you know, it's coming. Especially, you know, Groves is going to do that the first first series. You're always going to get something deep. You're going to get some type of reverse, something that's going to hit you, sting you hard, and they did it. Um, you know, that game we went three and out, so they had a good defense stand. We had a horrible punt. Um, and then they come with that, that first shot deep, and it, it stung. It stung a lot. And uh, proud of our kids for, for sticking in there and fighting because that, you know, especially in our game, I mean, you can be like, oh, gosh, here it comes again. Here comes Groves. But uh, I think our kids did a good job of fighting, and so did their kids. Their kids fought all the way to the end. And then, of course, talk about the Kenny boys. Obviously, um, obviously, um, Graydon Kenny, um, I'll tell you, I mean, Colton Kenny, my goodness. I mean, the way that both Kenny brothers have been playing – I mean, like, it's, I mean, like Colton at quarterback. Um, just describe. I mean, like, I've I've watched this kid play. Just the guts that he has running your offense to a to a T. And 
you know, when you look at the Veer offense, I've never seen the Veer offense ran as perfectly as you guys have been doing um, in the last couple weeks, especially in the last two weeks against Groves. Um, talk about how um, the Kinney boys have been doing for you guys. Thanks, uh, Sammy. They're, they're playing really well. It's the glue. I mean, obviously, um, to make a true Veer offense work, you need to have the quarterback and a B-back, you know, the, the, the guy behind the quarterback, the, what we call the B-back. Those two have to get things going. It, it, the, the offense starts from inside out. Um, so you got to have a B-back that's tough, that understands how to uh, get gain yards inside the tackles, and then you got to have a quarterback that can make quick decisions. Um, sometimes, obviously, you know, it's two decisions. Sometimes it's three decisions um, in a very short, minded, short amount of time. Um, both are veteran guys, and, and Colton has been a three-year starter. So he's, you know, obviously the more experience you have, the better you get at stuff. And, of course, when you look at, of course, Jack Lewis, I mean, like, what he did, I know um, I know he played he plays on your defense, but he didn't play a lot on offense. And he scored two big, dro- two big touchdowns in yeah. that game. I mean, talk about how Jack Lewis is, um, you know, what was your initial <laughs> thought process of putting him – up on an offense, you know. Normally, he's been playing defense for you guys. Yeah, he. Well, he's actually. Um, he he's he has uh, been a two-year starter for us on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, and I think sometimes people, you know, they they hone in on, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sean Emerson and Grandin and, and Kyle Robbins and those guys, and then you got Jack Lewis is quietly getting things done. And uh, you know, this year I'm actually I have the stats in front of me, just ironically, and. Uh, you know, he's our second leading rusher. He's got 657 yards on the year. He's averaging almost 15 yards a carry. So yikes, um, that's insane. Yeah, he. <laughs> it's just how stupid I am, right? We can't get him the ball. We should give him the ball more. So um, uh, he's doing a really good job, and uh, he's a tough kid. He's a very competitive kid. He uh, he understands uh, offense. He's extremely smart, um, and he gets the ball in his hands. He's trying to score every play. And when you look at, of course, the um, and of course you look at winning that game, twenty-one fourteen, just to see you guys emotional, you know, going crazy and all that, you know, seeing the student section, I'm celebrating. Yeah. How 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 did that one feel? Obviously, it was good. I think uh, the the biggest thing that you take away from that, I thought we did a really good job for four quarters. Um, um, you know, our, we talked before the game and, and literally I said the word 21 points. I, I, we have to score at least 21 points and we can't turn the ball over. And that was our, our big focus. And uh, because, he, you know, the last couple of years, the game has been tight and close. Um, and, you know, we turn the ball over. We, we give up a big play by them. So, you know, eliminating big plays and turnovers. Uh, we played them last year in the playoff game and we had five turnovers versus them in the first round of, or the second round of the playoffs. Um, and you can't win a football game in the, against anyone, let alone a playoff team and as good, a team as good as Grove. So the big thing was take care of the ball, and I thought we did a good job of, of doing that in both games. And, of course, I want this – now comes the Sunday part. I mean, like, of course, the selection show, you know, you're watching, and everybody, like around, everybody around the state's watching. Mm-hmm. And you look at – I mean, like, I, I do my projections, you know, and I've got – you know, I've got you guys getting a home game, you know. Um, so, and then when you look at the matchup and you look at Groves on there, I think there had to be a part of you go like, we just beat these guys earlier in the year. We just beat these guys this last week. Now we got to play these guys again. So what was your kids' thought process thinking, okay, we got to play these guys. We just beat these guys last week. Now you got to play them again this week. So mm-hmm. what were their, what was your thought process and what were the kids' thought process thinking that now, now you have to play them again? you know, coming well, up in the following week. Truthfully, you know, I mean, we know if if we're good and we want to do anything, we're going to have to play them twice, right? You're going to play them the regular season and you're going to play them the playoffs. So do you want it week one or week two? But it's going to come one of the, those two weeks. So it is what it is. And to me, it's let's let's get it on. Let's let's go right away. That, that's fine. I mean, I, I think the state, I don't, I don't particularly like how they do all that stuff. I, I think – I'd, I'd imagine every team, I don't care if it's Lake Orion, it's, if it's Chippewa, it's Seaholm, or it's, you know, uh, Forest Hills, uh, or, you know, Zealand East or West, they're probably, when they get to the playoffs, they want to see someone different. So I think, you know, the seating could be a little better, the, but I'm not, that's way above my pay grade. I mean, I, I imagine Groves is the same way, probably doesn't want to see us either. I mean, you want to see someone else, you want to get outside your league. 
we uh, we all play each other all the time, and it seems like every after you get done playing a rival, you play them again. <laughs> you know, it's not not just us; it's all over the state, right? I mean, Zealand West, Zealand East played. You know, um, it's just it is what it is, and then you get like it, you just shake your head sometimes because you get last weekend you get Clarkston at four and five hosting a four and five Romeo. Like, well, how does how does that happen in the first round? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you know, once again, I'm not smart enough to figure that stuff out, so I guess I'm just the, the average guy that's complaining with no answers, so I should shut shut my ass up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, you look at it, and then, you know, so, I mean, you look at it, there was a lot of interesting rematches this weekend that came around the state. Obviously, you got Lake Ori and Oxford. You had Romeo mm-hmm. and Clarkson with a rivalry. Um, you know, um, obviously, um, some. I mean, like, there wasn't a lot of upsets, but mm-hmm. but there was a couple of them, but... But let's look at your game from last week. Of course, now we go to your game. And I've noticed you guys wearing the maroon helmet and the all-black look. I mean, like, I'll tell you what. I, I'll i be honest. I absolutely love your all-black uniforms. With Those the, things are sexy. Uh, with the maroon helmet with the American flag S on it. I mean, like, that is just such a perfect uniform for you guys. <laughs> It is perfect, you know? Yeah, well, our kids love it. Um, our coaches love it. Um, I've grown to love it a lot. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big traditionalist. I think we're maroon and white, so we should wear those colors. But uh, I'm not going to lie. They look good. Uh, they look good at night. I, I think the combination is great. I think, I, you know, I, I truly didn't pick out the uniform. I didn't get it designed, uh, you know. So whoever got it designed is... It was pretty cool. Whoever did that uniform design should get a pay raise, in my opinion. That's what I, I know. Think. I mean, that's how I'm <laughs> looking at. He's actually it. one of our. He's one of our coaches. I don't. He doesn't get paid. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I think, yeah, he deserves something. I mean, that uniform looks really good. I mean, and then that atmosphere looked just awesome. You know what I mean? When yeah. you look at that atmosphere, and then let's look at the game. I mean, you guys looked really good in the first half. I mean, you scored 35 points in the first half. You yeah. took a 35-7 lead. You had everything clicking. I mean, like, everything was rolling. I mean, like, so describe that first half a little bit. You know what I mean? In your well, eyes. It was good. I mean, I think uh, we, we our first drive, we came down and scored, which is which was, was awesome. Um, um, and then we, we stopped them, and we scored again. So we scored. We had five possessions in the first half. We scored on all five of them. Uh, you know, the big one was obviously the uh, um, the turnover they had, and we were up 21, so we got a short field, and we scored the very first play to make it go, go up 28-0. Um, that was a huge one, and I thought that was a big, big dagger, but uh, hats off to them. They came back and scored, uh, and then we scored, and then, you know, right before the half, they got, they got that score. Uh, that gave them a lot of momentum. So it goes into halftime at 35-14, and then they get the ball back, and they score the first play. Um, so, I mean, it's a, it's a 35-21 ball game. And, you know, once again, hats off to those guys, those kids that, that fought for four quarters. I mean, they fought until the very last 22 seconds of the game. Um, and so did our kids, though. You know, I, 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 you know, I don't want to disregard what our kids do because they, they fought. I mean, I'm glad we had the 28-point lead, but uh, they – you know, they could have easily dumped in the tank, too. They're teenagers, right? They can go, oh, no, words me. But they didn't. Our kids fought and fought and fought. And, uh, you know, we able to score 56, which was big. I look at that score, and I said to myself, am I watching a Big 12 game? Because, <laughs> no. you know, you look <laughs> if at. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah. that game looked like an actual Big 12 game, basically, with, with all that offense being scored. I mean, like. You know, I'm going like, what are you? We're going like, what's going on here? I mean, like, I'm this first. I mean, first game, it's all defensive and sl- slugfest, 21-14, and then second time around, I mean, like, 56-49. I'm going like, what am I watching here? This is Big 12 football. This that was one of the more exciting, craziest games I've been a part of. I mean, I can think of uh, three games uh, in my kind of time, four games really, and three of them have to be Groves games. But one, you know, the Southfield game when we beat them when they were absolutely loaded uh, mm-hmm. that was an exciting game we had to come we were down two scores in the fourth quarter we had to come back and win um you know we had the uh groves game where we had uh our caleb nor had a run down their uh 
their their big time receiver that went to Michigan State and strips that or you know, stripped him of the ball that uh, they go and win. Um, you know that there's huge games, and then uh, this one was lights out. I mean, it was just it was just crazy. I mean, when you look at a course, the fact that you guys obviously you know the rivalry, and also the fact that they're in a division higher than you guys this year. Groves in the white, you guys are in the blue. I mean, like. You know, when you look at this rivalry, you kind of like got to throw everything out of the window, you know? Yes, 100%. I mean, there's been, um, I remember one of those other games that was extremely exciting. I think we played them in, in 2012, and I think they were like, we were playing the last game of the year, and I think they were like 1-7 and seven or something like that, or and we were like 7-2, and two, but it, they were driving to beat us, and we got a fumble and, and a 103-yard uh, fumble recovery to win the game. So, you know, it's been a vice versa for us where they've been really, really good and we've been really, really bad. And it's a, it's a, it's a one score game. So, uh, yeah, when the rivalry goes and you throw all that stuff out the window, that, that's the case for most rivalries, but sometimes, uh, you know, it uh, it can get ugly, but, uh, I think our, our, you know, that rivalry game, uh, keeps everything close because kids are really playing. It, it means something to them on both sides. And it's a rivalry that's separated by only, I think, about about a mile or two, maybe off thirteen uh, yeah. mile. You know what I mean? Sammy, I think I can. I take a pitching wedge in all directions of the school. Hit like five high schools inside of our district. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy. And let's look at now your next opponent, which is Waterford Mott. I mean, obviously, I know you've had to have seen Waterford Mott when they played against them, um, Livonia Franklin. It was a wild and crazy game in that one. Um, yeah. Obviously, they got a very good quarterback in Caleb Osborne. Um, what was your initial thought process when you saw um, the water from my Corsairs? Um, truth of the matter is, I, I you know, I, I tend not to pay attention. I'm not on social media. As you know, I don't know a lot of what's going on around us. I just kind of focus on what we do. And I know it sounds so cheesy, but it's so true. I, it's ridiculous. So I had heard probably four or five weeks ago that Mott was – playing well and someone I just heard someone hey, that's good they have this good quarterback I'm like whatever I just we don't play him so what does it matter I didn't really think about much of them and then we went out uh, my wife and I went to the game and I met a buddy of mine that uh understand or knows a lot about high school football scene and he's telling me about this kid and oh wow I didn't know how good he was and then I saw him and after the first two series I'm like oh my god this kid's a problem he is good he just looks fluid you know, athletic, uh, kind of, it's just, he's like a man amongst boys out there. He looked, he's good. He's really, really, really good. So we have our hands full. We have our hands full this week. And when you look at that matchup, obviously, um, you know, when you look at the stats, you know what I mean? You look at, of course, um, you know, it's going to be an interesting matchup to see how you guys match up. But like I said, with Water Vermont, you know, they have not seen a veer before in the Lakes Valley. And, I don't think a lot of teams in that league run that offense that you guys run, you know, and I think that's going to be a really interesting, fo- fun football game down there in Birmingham. Yeah, I think it should be uh, a really good game, a really good matchup. I mean, we have to stop them. I think uh, I don't think you can completely stop this kid. I, I think he's that good. I don't think uh, you're going to contain him. So, you know, we have to understand – the game plan of, you know, keeping the ball away from him and, and using our offense to our defense advantage by limiting, limiting him, his possessions. we got to hold on to the ball. We can't turn the ball over to give him more opportunities. And we got to score when, when, we, when we do have the ball. So I know it sounds so, like, cliche and, 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 and coach speak, but that's what it is. I mean, limit their possessions, score when we have the ball, and don't turn the ball over and, and just try to limit him uh, as best you possibly can. And when you look at, of course, the last um... – when you look at you guys, you know what I mean? Like this season, of course, you guys have played a really good schedule. I mean, you played against um, UD Jesuit early on. I um, mean, played against, in the blue, uh, against teams in the blue, obviously. You've won, uh, you won that division. Um, when you look at playing in this type of game, does Waterford Mott compare a little bit to UD Jesuit at all in your mind, or, you know, when it comes to athleticism? Uh, well, that's a good question. I don't, they do have some talent. They got a slot receiver. I don't have the rush in front of me. Number three is a really good football player. 
Um, you know, they got this number eight kid is a basketball kid. I've, I've heard he's pretty good. I, you know, I, this kid, that quarterback, this Caleb kid from Mott, I mean, he, I don't think there's many like him. I, I, we haven't seen, I mean, the kid at, uh, uh, U of D, uh, also number one, is a shorter version of him, uh, fat. I think he, the, the kid from U of D is faster. Um, but this kid is just, I feel this kid's just, uh, uh the game comes slower to for from the kid at Mott. I mean, they just he just he seems so athletic and fluid. Um, so I don't think we haven't seen anything like this kid. Um, I can tell you that. Um, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to the challenge, and I know our coaches are looking forward to it. And um, we're gonna fight our tails off. And of course, the coaching matchup you against some Coach Chris Farr. Of course, Farr did coach at Seaholm. Um, mm-hmm. What is your thought process having to go up against um, Coach Farr? Well, I've known I've known Chris, gosh, Lee, um, close to 20 years now. Maybe not that long. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Um, I've known him when he was at, assistant at Seaholm. Known him when he was the head coach at Seaholm. In fact, one year I came and uh, I was out of coaching. I helped him out for a couple games. Just in the, I, I mean, I'm not helping. I mean, I was just in the box, kind of watching. Uh, but uh, so I think he's, you know, he's a good dude for for kids, and I think, uh, you know, he's. He's been around a while, and he's, I'm sure he's got some tricks up his sleeve for us. And I expect he will have that game plan ready for you guys coming up. Um, before I let you go, Coach, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, any 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 big time players that have been making some noise beside the Kinney brothers, like who've been who deserve who hasn't gotten a lot of attention, should get a lot of attention. Well, we talked about Jack Lewis. I mean, I, I didn't realize, I mean, how many yards he was racking up. He, he's, uh, like I said, he's got 44 carries for 657 yards, almost 15 yards a carry. Um, he's doing a really, really good job. Um, you know, we have some young guys. Uh, Penn Roberts has, has been a very good player for us on defense and offense. Alejandro Roth is, is a junior as well. He's doing a good job on defense. Um, so, you know, and then up front, you know, that's kind of where everything starts. I think we're we're extremely physical up front. I mean, I would have a hard time believing anyone turns on a tape and doesn't see our offensive line being really, really physical. So, and that's led by our guards, uh, Blake Baldner and uh, Luke Thurswell and, and Luke Johnson at center. Um, so, excited to see how they play. And, uh, you know, I don't, you know, we don't, there's no, it's hard to com- do the comparisons, but um, I'm always a bet on our league. I think the OAA is one of the best leagues in, in, in the state. I think our, we have a highly competitive league and I'm looking forward. To, I hope that our, our league experience will help us when we play outside the league. And that will be re- will be tested this week for sure. Um, Coach Jim DeWalt, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, wish you the best of luck this weekend at home against the Corsairs of Waterford Mott. Thank you really much again, Coach. Thanks, Sammy. I appreciate it. Yep. Talk to you. Yep, talk to you. And then that was, of course, Co- the own Coach Jim DeWalt here. Um, a lot of storylines when you look at that matchup. I mean, obviously, with the way Seaholm pl- has been playing, um, you get Coach Dewald's um, thought process. Um, you know, and I'll be honest with you. You know what I mean? That is, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that matchup goes between Water between Waterford Mott and Seaholm um, coming up in Birmingham. Um, let's look at other games to recap um, from the from the past week. Obviously, there were a lot of other games too. Um, Harper Woods. Um, Coming back from twenty uh, from thirteen six down, knocking off Croswell Lex um twenty to thirteen in a very interesting game. I mean, Stephon Buford was a story for um Harper Woods. He had three touchdowns, um, two passing, one in the air. Um of course they lose Dakota Garriant. That's a big loss for Coach Rob Odin and his team. Um but this team fought back behind the pl- behind the experience of Buford. Um Austin Ramity House, he caught the winning touchdown. Um, they held um, Croswell Lex to zero points in the second half. Um, so that's a big win for Coach um, for Coach um, Rob Odin and his team. Now they get to move on to the next round to play Marysville. Um, they knocked off Madison Heights Lampier. And that'll be another interesting game coming up in Division Four. Um, in that matchup, so that'll be really interesting to see how those two teams match up in the district final but you know when we look at Harper Woods obviously with the credit that they have um with the experience they have especially on the defensive side of the ball 
Um, the defense is really starting to gel a little bit, and that's a good sign for Coach um, Rob Oden and, and the Pioneers with the way that that team's been playing. So, really, when you look at it, I mean, you look at that matchup, and you look at, you know, you look and say with Harper Woods, of course, um, the schedule that they played has really helped them. Um, so I'm curious to see how this will be taking on the Mariners of Marine of uh, Marysville. Um, which is going to be really, really interesting to see how that one goes um, in that one. Um, Division three, um, Avondale, of course, had no, uh, Avondale and Holly had a back and forth game. I mean, Holly had the lead at one point, then Avondale had the lead. I mean, Avondale pulled away late. It was 34-24. Um, obviously, Tyler Herzog was a story. Um the running attack was very good. I mean, like, you really look at the situation, how that one unfolded. Um, you really look at that situation, how that one went. Um, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Seaholm, I mean, like, sorry. Um, Avenue played really well in that game. They they played really, really well in that game. They, I mean, like, you know, against a very good Holly team. I mean, obviously well coached under Coach Dave Tooley. Um, I think when you look at the situation, how that is, um, you know, for Avondale, you know, kind of, I mean, for Coach Bob Meyer, winning in the postseason, that's their first win since 2012 in the postseason, so that's a good start. But now comes a bigger test awaits them when they take on Wall Lake Western, a team that really has, um, a team that really has a, um, you know, they destroyed Redford, Redford Thurston last week. I think it was 70 to nothing. Um, and it wasn't even close at all. I mean, so Coach Bob Meyer's going to have his hands full when Avondale goes to um, Wald Lake to take on the Warriors of Wald Lake Western, and that's going to be a really interesting game. I mean, I think, you know, it's a clash of different styles. Western will, will spread it out at times to run the ball, Um, but there's been some times where Western, and I know Coach Coy Stroach very well when he was at Farmington, Um, but also there's been some times that Wald Lake Western's been has ha, has been very last days ago. And I think this is where Avondale could give, pro, give them problems because we'll see. I mean, Avondale, the way that team plays, um, I think it'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes for them. Um, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how, um, you know, that matchup does um, turn out. Um, obviously, with Seaholm, we talked, um, we talked about, um, you know, in Division Two, we obviously talked with Coach Dewald. Um, we talked about um the matchup with with, with them and Waterford Mott. Um, obviously for Seaholm, I think the key is going to be is up front, and can they get to Caleb Osborne? That's going to be the key in that matchup. Um, and then you look at, of course, Division One, looking at last week's games. I mean, there were a couple of head scratchers in Division One. I. I mean, first one out of league. You know, I got to give a shout out to Davison. Um, putting up the most points they scored in school history, 76 points in a 76 to 35 blowout of Lapeer. I mean, I know last week Davison and Lapeer played each other, and that was 56 55 in favor of Davison, but I didn't expect Davison just to go in there and just throttle. They just completely throttled Lapeer. I mean, couldn't believe it. I mean, 76 points. I mean, that is unheard of. Of a team that give up that many points. I mean, man, Davison showed no mercy in that game. My goodness, they didn't show any mercy. But when you look at it here, Davison's on the other side of the bracket in Division I um, with Belleville and Celine who play each other this week. That's going to be a really interesting game. Um... Then Davidson could be seeing Rockford in the next round, pending they get by Grand Blank. So that's something to really, really keep an eye on there. But back to the OA side of the bracket in D1. Um, Safford Arson Tech had no issue with Dearborn Fortson. Um, that was 38-14. to Isaiah Marshall played really well in that game. Um, but I think the test for them comes this week because they take on Detroit Cast Tech. And the technicians... They're very good. They have they have a very good quarterback. And um, I think it's Corey Sadler's the quarterback. 
Um, um, that's going to be a really interesting matchup because those two teams played earlier in the year in South and Arson Tech won at Wayne State in week one. But in this game, South and Arson Tech, they were, you know, they showed why, they showed the experience. Isaiah Marshall played well in that game. I mean, they showed why they played very well. And I think the Warriors, you know, they're they're gearing up, getting ready for that big matchup with Detroit Cast Tech. And I think that's going to be a really interesting matchup because you look at that matchup and say, okay, you know, these two teams have played already won, Southfield won. I'll tell you what, here's the thing. There's some rematches this week. I'll tell you what, it is hard. It is hard to beat a team twice in one year. It is extremely hard to do it because, you know, and, you know, when you look at it, I mean, like, you know, I was part of a team that um, in 05, my senior year, beat Clarkson twice in one year. It was not an easy. It was not easy. I'll tell you that much right now. And, you know, you look at, of course, yeah, Lake Orion and Clarkson played this week. Now you have Detroit Cast Tech and South and Arson Tech. They play this week. I mean, like, it is hard, really hard to beat a team twice in one year. It is really, really hard. And this is a rematch from week one when they played at Wayne State. So... It's going to be interesting over there in Southfield. I know they're playing. I know they've already decided they're going to play playing on Saturday afternoon at one o'clock, and that's going to be really interesting between the um, technicians and the Warriors. It was the technicians that knocked out Southfield Arson Tech last season, um, and then that winner will either get Macomb Dakota and Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley won the first meeting against Macomb Dakota. In that one, so that's another rematch um, between those two Mac Red powers. So that's going to be really interesting to see how that matchup goes um, between Detroit Cast Tech and Stafford Arts and Tech. Um, Adams and West Bloomfield. Um, this was this was a stunner, forty-two fourteen in favor of West Bloomfield over Rochester Adams. Um, when you look at the game, obviously. Um, you know, Cam Flowers had a really nice game for um, West Bloomfield. He had a long touchdown run. West Bloomfield's defense took advantage of Adams' turnovers. I know Ryan Waters got got hurt. Um, along with Brady Priest scoring, both guys got hurt. And that ended up being a um, huge blow for Rochester Adams. Um, you know, obviously not having Priest scoring, Brady Priest scoring, it hurt them. I know he hurt his knee in that game. And you know, Waters, I know with his... Um, his shoulder. Um, when you look at Adams' season, recapping their season, um, the Highlanders, I'll tell you what, yes, they lose pre-score, and that's going to be a big, big loss. But they do return the quarterback in Ryan Waters. Waters has really, I was really impressed with him this season, with the way that he played. He's pl had a great year. I mean, he had a really... You know, it was rough early on. Obviously, you know, you're a young quarterback trying to get in, trying to get in the flow of the offense, trying to get a flow of everything. But Adams found ways. Adams found ways to win. And you know, and there was a time where they had where they really struggled at times against Clarkston, against Lake Orion. Um, those were two games I know they really struggled. But the last three games against Sterling Heights Stevenson, um, Stony Creek. He's looked really good. I mean, he looked he's looked really good in the last final two in Blue Bay Hills. That he's looked really efficient and really good. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what what um, Ryan Waters do does um does his junior junior year coming up. Um, but I wish him the best of luck in a, in a full speed recovery from a shoulder injury. Um, and also for Adams, you know, future's bright for that football program over there. Coach Tony Petrino, you know, he does a really good job of that program over there at um. Rochester Adams, but um, just a tough way to lose that one to West Bloomfield. Um, but I think this high litter team, this program will be back, and they will be a force to be a reckon with next year. Um, now to West Bloomfield, and when you look at the Lakers, um, you look at West Bloomfield and say, okay, um, West Bloomfield, you know, 
Rick Nance, you know, has been really good all year at quarterback. He's been really good all year. Elijah Durham's been really good at wide receiver. The question for me was going to be the running game. And to be a good team in the postseason, you have to have a good running game. And there were some questions when you look at West Booby and Coach Jack Hilbers with the running attack. It looked like with Cam Flowers, you know, they've really figured that running attack out. I mean, you can use Cam Flowers in so many different ways. And they also have Brandon Davis Swain who could be a power back if need be. Even though he plays tight end, you know, he's a big enough body that he can catch the ball, he can run the ball. I still remember what he did against Chippewa Valley when he ran that winning um, two-point conversion before the um, storms came, um, before the um, severe thunderstorms came over at, over to, um, you know, down to him. Um, and I know, and I remember that story. I remember I could tell, I remember I was really worried for Coach Hilbers' team that day, you know, when we had those storms that came through. I remember those tornadoes that went through, um, you know, in the Livingston County, um, Ingham County, Livingston County that area. Um, and then there were tornado warnings in Wayne County. Um, you know, not where they were at, but I remember that really well. And that was a pretty scary night, you know, especially how warm it was, how humid that was. And you have a cold front coming down and, you know, you had that threat of tornadoes that night. You know, a lot of people lost power during that, during that storm, during those storms. Um, that hit back on that August day in week one. So, you know, so really, but when you look at West Bloomfield, there's options with that team to run the ball. And, you know, this team's been doing very well without Kari Jackson, Montel Johnson. Um, you know, the defense has been really efficient as of late. Bryce Rose back from injury, which is good. Um, Jameer Benjamin's been solid all year long. Um, you know, and, and obviously with the play of that defense, I mean, like Jane Allos has really improved as a player. Um, you can put him anywhere. Um, so when you look at West Bloomfield, they got a great case to do very well. And you look at, of course, West Bloomfield's magic coming up, you know, and I know Tyler Kemp will do a lot of this. Um, you know, he does the, um, he, I know I know him very well on Civic Center TV. And, you know, obviously, he's got the show called This Week in Laker Football. Um, shout out that show. It's a great show, by the way. Um, would recommend um, people, would recommend our viewers, OA Nation, watch that show. I mean, great show, by the way. Um, but when you look at the match coming up for, for um, West Bloomfield, they go to Swinehart to take on Utica Eisenhower, the Eagles. They got a quarterback. And Preston Crum, their running game is solid. Um, they look the part. They look they look good. I mean, they look really good. Um, they played Clarkston, um, one that went thirty four nineteen against them. Um, in week nine, um, obviously Preston Crum burned them in the air. Um, but you know when you look at that matchup, um, obviously. Utica Eisenhower is as good as Preston Crump takes. That's really what it is with them. I mean, yeah, they co won the Mac Red this year with Chippewa Valley. And, you know, and that is, that's going to be an interesting matchup because West Bloomfield, we know, has got the speed. We know they got the talent. We know they got the, um, they got the playmakers. Ike's got the defense. They got Preston Crump. West Bloomfield's defense is not a bad defense either. So, this is going to be a really interesting matchup over at Swinehart. Um, the only unfortunate thing for a Laker fan was the playoff point system didn't work well for you. 77.8 to 78. And that's how the matchup is going to be for West Bloomfield. So, that's going to be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, over there. Because, you know, when you look at that matchup, I think it could be a really tight, high-scoring game between, or it could be a low-scoring game. You know, West Bloomfield's defense could just come in there and shut down, um, and shut down Preston Crum. If they do that, you know, then that could be really interesting. Because I'll tell you what, you know, when the districts came out, I mean, like I didn't think Utica Eisenhower fans would see West Bloomfield in that district. 
and here they are. And that should be a really, really interesting matchup. That should be a barn burner. Let's see what, how that one goes. And then there's Ro and then let's go Clarkston. I mean, when you look at Clarkston the last three weeks, it has not been good. It honestly, it has not been good. Um, they've been predominantly healthy. I mean, like, yes, Adam Denver's out with that collarbone. That's not an easy injury to overcome. Um, but they played Romeo. And I think Ro playing Romeo kind of cured a lot of ills for Clarkston. Because Des Stevens looked like himself. Um, Bo Bowman twins played efficient, really good football. Brady Collins had, I think, his best game of the year as a quarterback. And Rome and um, they basically just overwhelmed Victor Earl in the Romeo offense. They just overwhelmed him. And that says something. That says something. And, you know, that's a credit to Coach Justin Pintar in that defense. That might be the best game Clarkson's played all year. And I know Clarkson this year has had some games where they've, where they've had some, you know, moments where they just haven't looked good. But I think that Romeo game, honestly, that was Clarkson's best game of the year. That Stevens played great. Um, both Bowman twins were very good. Brady Collins, I thought, played his best game. Um, Blake Co I mean, like, um, Brody Cozen looked efficient. I mean, he looked good. Um, but I'll tell you what, I mean, like, when you look at Clarkston, um, you know, I got to give them props. I mean, their defense looked a lot better than they've been the last three weeks. Um, but I'll tell you what, I don't know if it was more of them. I think it was Bolt, or that Romeo was not very good, considering that both teams have played a very difficult schedule. Both teams have played against proven teams, a lot of proven playoff teams. And... You know, and Clarkson obviously getting the home game. You know what I mean? That's huge for them. Huge for confidence for them um, to get that. So, we'll see what, it's, what happens with Clarkson. I know they got Lake Orion coming up. And then let's look at Lake Orion and Oxford. 58-26. Um, favor of Lake Orion. Lake Orion's offense just could not be stopped in that game. Um, T.R. Hill had five, had five um, total touchdowns in that game. Billy Roberson had two of them. Um, Lake Orion offensively is a juggernaut. They are a machine right now. Just the way that offense has been playing in the last two weeks, um, especially against Celine two weeks ago, I mean, they look like a machine. All year long, this, this offense looks like a machine. I mean, they are a proven machine. They can beat you in so many different ways. And that says a lot about Lake Orion coach Chris Bell's offense. That does. The other side, on the defensive side, is a concern. Because you look at the Dragons defensively last two weeks, you know, 28-26, that's 54 points allowed. That's not good. So if you're Coach Rick Powell, you got to shore that up a little bit. you got to shore it up, you know, because there's going to be games where you're going to need your defense to come, come through. And, you know, you have a rematch coming up with Clarkson, and that's a re and that's a difficult matchup, you know, going into a matchup with, um, you know, taking on a Wolves team, obviously, that you know is going to want you. So we'll see what happens there. Um, with Oxford, um, when you look at the Wildcats this year, um, they're going to be solid next year. Jack Hendricks is a solid quarterback. Look, really, they lose the Katie brothers. Um, they lose Brody Moore. Um, those are going to be big losses for the for Oxford. But you let you have Luke Johnson, who is going to be a star next year. I mean, I am. If anybody is looking in the bottom, I mean, if you're a college coach, my suggestion is I want you to take a look at Luke Johnson. He is a athlete. I mean, he plays football. He's a wrestler. But I'll tell you what, if you offer him, I would say this to every college coach right now. Please offer Luke Johnson because I will tell you what right now. He is a humble kid and a great kid. I mean, he he is a hard runner. He is a very, very good player. Very good football player for Oxford. I mean, Jack Hendricks is going to be very good next year. I mean, he's going to be, he's already experienced varsity as a sophomore. 
and he's really been playing really good football for Oxford. He's he played really, especially when they started off the year at one and four, at one and four, um, <coughs> and then they've had one and five. They had to win three straight to get in the playoffs. Um, actually, three or four to get in the playoffs. I mean, they had to win three or four to get in the playoffs. They did that, and when you look at Oxford, um, Coach Jack Lyon's going to be very good next year. I think he's going to be. You have a quarterback. You have a quarterback in Jack Hendricks. Your your sub varsity programs are very good, especially your freshmen. Um, and I think honestly, when you look at Oxford next year, they could be a they could be a force. I mean, they could really be a force next year to really watch for. So we'll see what happens in that one. And then when you look at Lake Orion Clarkston, um, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Considering last time at Clarkson week seven, it was 42-21 in favor of Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion obviously using T.R. Hill and Billy Roberson. Both had big games against Clarkston. Um, now the game's at Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion hasn't beaten Clarkson at home since 2010. Um, does that change this weekend? We'll see. We will see. Um, Clarkson obviously... Um, we know what they did in 06, in 2006. Lake Orion's an undefeated team. Clarkson went in there and just, you know, and won that game against the Dragons. So this is going to be a very interesting game between Lake Orion and Clarkson. It always is when you look at rivalry games. As I mentioned earlier with Detroit Cast Tech and South Arson Tech, it is always hard to beat a team twice in one year. It always has been. Um, and... You know, and, I, and, it, and it still holds. It's, I mean, if you beat a team twice in one year, you've done your job. <coughs> but if you, but it's always hard, though, because, you know, the second time around, you know what to expect. So we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens um, in those game, in the, in the um, games coming up. So I'll do my projections here. We got volleyball districts starting up. Um, soccer, we got one team left, and that's Troy Athens right now playing. Um, I think they're in the quarterfinals right now. Um, so give them a shout shout out to Troy Athens. Um and then let's look at of course volleyball district starting up, obviously. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how um, you know, everybody looks at Birmingham Marion's favorite in division one. That is true. Um, Northville could be a threat this year. I think the Mustangs, they they're 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 a force to be reckoned with this year. Um when you look at, of course, OA teams that could do well, I mean, obviously Clarkston, you got to look at them probably as the best team in the OA in districts. I know they got a tough district. Um, I think Lake Orion is going to be um, a challenge for them. Um, I think Oxford's got a nice draw. They got to get by Romeo and Port Huron. Um, Bloomfield Hills, I like where their draw is at. Um, you know what, them, um, Troy. Same thing. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, like, obviously. And then, of course, you look at, um, you know, in Division Two. I think Ferndale U or Ferndale U. Ferndale's got a great chance to do pretty well there. They got to get by Hazel Park. Um, so really, I do have a column up linked on the blog at Saginaw 50 at blogspot.com. It's also on the O1 TV blog as well. The volleyball districts, um, you know, coming up there. So. It'll be very interesting to see how how the volleyball districts go um, this week, um, starting with the um, po with the district play. Then you go on to the um, then you go on to regionals, and then you have the um, quarterfinals and the state finals after, and the state semis and finals after that. So, you know, really, we're getting really close to the near the end of the fall season here. Um, a lot of things going on around the state right now. Um, let's do my picks here for um, week for the um. For the district final. Um, let's go division four. Um, when you look at the match between Harper Woods and Marysville, Marysville has been tested in the uh, in the um in the uh, MAC. Um, it's not an easy, you know, Mer I mean make Marysville, they're a solid team. They're a good team. I think Marysville's in the I think they're either in the MAC or in the blue water. I gotta look. But I think when you look at that matchup against Harper Woods, and they're going down to Harper Woods, that is not an easy matchup going down I-94 um, into Wayne County. And 
obviously for Croswell Lex last week, traveling from Sanilac County, you know, down M25 to I-94 into Port Huron. That's not an easy, easy travel, especially in the height of rush hour. Um, so for Marine City, it's a, actually for um, Marysville, it's a little bit closer. Um, it's a little bit closer for them. Um, whoever wins this game is going to get either Carlton Airport or, um, you know, they're going to Carlton Airport or, um, I got to look at my, um, notes here, but, um, you know, it's either going to be, um, it's going to be, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how that one goes, but, um, I like Harper Woods in this one. I just think that the Pioneers have enough weapons to do very well. I mean, like, Jacob Odin's a weapon. You look at, um, you look at, of course, um, Stephon Buford, um, whether he plays wide receiver or quarterback. Um, he is a big time weapon. Nate Rush, though, if he, um, sees time, he's a weapon. Um, and then you have, um, and then their defense is absolutely, um, it's been looking very, very good as of late. Of course, they looked really good against Crosswell Lexington in the second half last week. Um, so that's going to be an interesting matchup, entertaining matchup to the least over there um, in Harper Woods between the Pioneers and the um, and um, Marysville. So that'll be really interesting how that one goes. Division three, um, Avondale taking on Wall Lake Western. This is going to be a tough matchup for Avondale because of Wall Lake Western's depth. Um, they have a good running back, quarterback solid. Um, Avondale, we know that wing T, that misdirection offense is going to pose some problems, but also they could throw the ball if they need to. Um, I think this is where strength of schedule comes into play here and it doesn't favor Avondale, um, at all. Um, I'd be really shocked if this one doesn't favor Avondale, but I'm going to take Wall Lake Western in this one because I just think that the Warriors really being at home. Um, I just think that, you know, with Avondale, it's going to be a challenge for Coach Bob Meyer. I think this game's close. I think this is close. I mean, I've talked to Sean Cotter about this a couple times, and he said it's going to be a, he said it'll be close for a half, but I'm not buying it one bit. So, I'm going to take, um, but I'm going to take Wall Lake Western close. I maybe, I probably would say a seven-point game maybe when I'm looking at between the, um, Warriors in the Yellow Jackets, so that'll be a really interesting match to say the least over there in um Wald Lake between Avondale and um Wald Lake Western. Division two, we got Waterford, Mott, and Seaholm. Caleb Osborne going against Seaholm's defense. Of course, talking to Coach Dewald on the podcast. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, I do, Waterford Mott has not seen a veer, and I think the veer will give will give the Corsairs problems. Now, Waterford Mott's defense is not great. They're not great. I mean, they could be... I expect this is going to be a shootout between the um, Corsairs and the Maples. I don't know if the Maples have an answer for Caleb Osborne. Um, I'd be shocked that they do. Um, but I just think at the end of the day here, um, I really think, you know what I mean, I think Seahome goes and wins this game because I think they're going to have just enough. I mean... Obviously, knocking off Groves is a big deal. I mean, it is a huge deal. I thought, you know, I'll be honest. I think Groves is much more better athletically than Waterford Mott is. Um, yes, Waterford Mott's got an athlete at quarterback, but so does so did Groves. Obviously, with Caden Hardy at quarterback. Um, obviously, when you look at Groves, um, when with Groves, you know they have the athletes, especially up front with Avery Gah. They have Sanders. Um, they have. Um, you know, they have a lot of proven talent on that team that Seaholm beat. So, you know, so I think this is going to be an interesting matchup, but I'm going to take the Maples in this one over the Corsairs because I think the Veer is going to make things hard for um, Coach Chris Farr's team. So, and I think, you know, for them not seeing a Veer, that's going to give them problems, and I think that I expect that will give them some issues there. So, I'm going to take C home over water for Mott in that game. So we'll see how that one goes in that one. Um, then in Division One, um, you look at, of course, Southfield Arts and Tech taking on Detroit Cast Tech. Saturday game. Um, rematch game. Um, 
Obviously, a t won that game last time in week one at Wayne State. It's going to be a little bit colder. My biggest fear for South Anderson Tech is will they be able to run the football? And obviously, with week, with Friday night, it was a relatively warm night. And it's going to be a little bit more chillier now. Now we're in the November. And in this game, you got to run the football. I know Detroit Cast Tech can run the football. They got proven run mix. I just don't know if Southfield can. I just don't know if the Warriors can. I'm a little worried about the Warriors running attack in this game. Um, and it's always hard to beat a team twice in one year. Um, it always is. In this game, I'm going to take Detroit Cast Tech in this game over Southfield Arson Tech. I know it kills me for Warrior fans. It kills me. To say this, but you know, when you look at the matchup, you know, it, it really looks at the that um when you look at the matchup, you know, it's gonna be a tight game. But I just think when you look at when you last year's game where Sadler had a big game against um against the Warriors defensively. I know Isaiah Marshall had a lot of trouble in that game last year. Um but I just think in this game here, it's going to be tight, but I just think Detroit Cast Tech scores a touchdown in the last second, um, last seconds to um, stun Southfield Arts and Tech. I, I don't know if I see the Warriors. Um, I'd be shocked. If, I wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors won this game. But in this matchup here, I got to take Detroit Cast Tech in this one um, just because of, you know, obviously the motivation they've had from last year. This is actually, I think, the fifth time in six meetings that these two teams have played. And these two teams know each other quite well. So we'll see how that matchup goes between the technicians and the Warriors. But, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes between those two teams. Um, West Bloomfield and Utica Eisenhower. Um, when I look at this matchup here on paper, you kind of, you got to search strengths and weaknesses. Um, there is, if there's one fatal flaw West Boomby has, it's up front. And it is a big flaw, especially on the offensive line. And Utica Eisenhower, they're a physical team defensively. They're, I mean, like, they will keep teams, you know, below 20 points. They have, a, both teams have proven quarterbacks. Preston Crum at Utica Eisenhower, Rick Nance at West Bloomfield. Both teams have athletes. I think West Bloomfield's more of that flashy type team, whereas Utica Eisenhower, at times, you know, they have a good running back as well. They can be flashy as well. Um, obviously, both teams have very good deep threats. Um, we know Ike's got a very good deep threat. I don't remember the name right now. It's not in my tip of my head right now. Um, but we know West Bloomfield with Elijah Durr. This is going to be a tight game. This is going to be a close game. But I'll tell you what. I think West Bloomfield's battles on the road, the tests that they've been through, I think playing Lake Orion and Clarkson is going to help West Bloomfield in this game. And I think they're going into Swinehart. And they have won the last two meetings against Utica Eisenhower. And I think they're going to go into Swinehart and they're going to beat Utica Eisenhower. I think the Lakers are going in there and they're going to send a message and say, you know what? We're here. The L boys are here. And you know who I think is going to win the game for them? Cameron Flowers. I think Cam Flowers is going to have a big game for West Bloomfield. I think he's going to, you know, he's going to find a way in that game. He's going to find a way to really expose Edika Eisenhower's defense. So I really like in this game, I think that the, um, that the Lakers are going in there and going to knock off the Eagles. I, it's going to be a really close game, but I really like the Lakers in that game. Lake Orion and Clarkston, you know? Lake Orion won 42-21 the first time. I think this is going to be a lot closer than 21 points. But when you look at Clarkston's defense, they still don't have an answer for T.R. Hill. They still don't have an answer for Billy Roberson. Even you have Des Stevens, you know what I mean, and Brady Cozen. You know, they still have issues defensively. Um, I think Lake Orion's a totally different animal compared to Romeo for Clarkston. Um, now, albeit Clarkston, we know they have Brady Collins. We know Des Stevens. 
Brady Cozen, um, and the Bowman Twins. I think Lake Orion's run run defense shuts down the Bowman Twins. I really do. I'd be shocked they don't. Um, but I like Lake Orion this game because of the offense. I really think Lake Orion's offense is going to be the difference in this game. Um, you know, I think because of Billy Roberson. Um, Roberson did not play much the second half last week against Oxford. Um, I think he'll be rested for this game. Um, T.R. Hill, obviously, we know that what he's more than capable of been doing. Um, you know, Raymond Payne, we know he's been doing. But watch for Dom Novak. I think Dom Novak has a big game here in this game. Um, he hasn't really been needed as of late, but I think he will be needing this game against a really, against a Clarkson defense that has, um, that looked really good against Romeo. Um, obviously now Romeo, albeit I'm not sold on that team, but, but I'll tell you what, um, I, I mean like I, it'll be a really interesting game at Lake Orion high school between, um, the dragons and the wolves in this game here. I really like the dragons in this game because of the offense. Um, the high octane offense like Orion has, um, do I expect to be a shootout? Um, maybe I do. I mean, maybe, I mean, like, I mean, like it's possibility that it could be a shootout. I think maybe it could be maybe like, um, I know people have been saying 35, 21 to me or like 30, but I just think it could be maybe a 48, a 49, 35 game. Maybe. I mean, like who knows? So we'll see what happens there, but I got like Corey win that game over at Clarkston over Clarkson, so we'll see what happens going forward. Now, I've always been wrong before, so we'll see how that one goes. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information uh, on the OA. Um, starting to work on the basketball blogs. We're also keeping an eye on the um, basketball situations over at Farmington and at Stony Creek. Well, so if we have news on the coaches over there, we'll um, write it on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. So, a lot to look at heading into the week. We're not that far away from the start of winter sports. So, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. I'd like to thank Seahome Coach Jim DeWall for being on the air today, talking um, about the Maples, especially especially last week's games against Groves and um against Groves and also previewing his team's match against Waterford Mott. So, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody.